In this segment, I'm covering sustainable development goal number 13. I'm going to go through what the United Nations expects from every single person on the planet to sacrifice in the name of saving the planet. Goal 13 claims to be committed to saving the planet and to do so, they say we must all act now. No questions asked. They have devised the plan and there is no plan B. SDG 13 has five targets, all worth drawing your attention to. However, in this segment, I want to take you through what the UN Agenda 2030 says that they require from you and me and from every single person on the planet to be able to meet this global goal that they call climate action. The UN says that if we are to solve the alleged climate crisis, we will all have to reduce our carbon footprint to between 2 and 2.5 tonnes of CO2 equivalent per person per year before 2030. According to their data, a typical resident of the Western world has a footprint of about 10 tonnes per year. However, in the United States, as per the 2020 data, they say it was an average of 14.6 tonnes per person per year. And the global average is 6.3 tonnes. So to reduce the impact of CO2 on our planet, we all need to get that average drop down to between 2 and 2.5 tonnes per person by 2030. So that is a huge, huge target. For now, they have advice on how we can start reducing our impact, but soon it will not be optional. Every human being will need to be in this range. And as stated at Davos earlier this year, they are currently working on an individual carbon tracker to ensure nobody exceeds their limit. So on first glance, some of their suggestions sound pretty decent. Actions like composting, buying eco-friendly and reusable products, driving less, recycling, becoming vegetarian one day a week, reducing waste, reducing the use of paper. It all sounds okay. A lot of us already do this. But when you look beyond the to-do list and take one of the individual carbon tracker tests, it becomes very apparent that once this is fully implemented, our living conditions, what we consume, and our freedom of movement will be seriously impacted. And I will show you why. So I've taken a few of these tests and the results always end up the same. So this one is called Climate Hero. And not only will this test tell me what my annual carbon footprint is and how far off I am from being within the range of two to 2.5 tonnes, it will also tell me what sacrifices I need to make to reduce it. So in this test, it starts by asking questions about my home, such as how large it is, what type of heating sources I use, if my insulation has been upgraded in the last 10 years, if I have air conditioning, solar panels, if I have a second house, and even if I have pets. Then the next section goes on to ask me about my traveling habits, such as how many domestic and international flights I take per year, and how many cars my household has, if they are petrol, diesel, biofuel, hybrids, or electric, how many kilometers I drive per year, when the car was built, the size of the car, how often I rent a car, use a taxi, take a ferry, and use public transport, walk or cycle, use a scooter, motorbike, or boat. Then in the next section, it asks about my consumption habits, how often I eat meat, how often I eat plant-based, if I grow my own food, if I waste food, use plastic, and then what my shopping habits are, such as how frequently I shop and what I buy, if I recycle, and then it asks if I offset my carbon footprint, which according to this means, do I donate money to climate positive projects? Okay, so my carbon footprint, as you can see, is being calculated. But before I get my results, it wants me to guess what category I'm in. Am I a climate villain over 10 tonnes, a climate consumer between 5 and 10, a climate friend between 2 to 5, or a climate hero under 2 tonnes? So my results are in. 
9.3 tonnes. According to this, I'm a climate consumer, almost a climate villain. So I'm almost five times over the allowance that will soon be mandatory to abide by. So on a personal note, I'm very environmentally conscious. I recycle, I compost, I walk, I grow some of my own food, and I don't even eat meat. Yet I'm almost five times over their set limit. It is just pure madness. Sure, maybe I could sacrifice a couple of more things to save the planet, but that's not going to bring me down anywhere near the 2 to 2.5 tonne range. So what will be required? What will I need to do to meet this target? Let's have a look at what Climate Hero suggests. Let's see how much I can reduce my annual footprint by and what activities and habits, as they like to call them, that I will have to give up. And as I press yes and agree on all of these directions, you will see my 9.3 tonne carbon footprint reduce. Okay, so it says to switch to an environmentally friendly electricity contract, add extra insulation to my home, avoid long distance flying because it emits more than two tonnes per flight. So if I switch out my long distance flight to a shorter flight, I can save 1.3 tonnes per year. Or if I don't fly at all, I can take two tonnes off my footprint. So given that the yearly range per individual is two to 2.5 tonnes, and a long distance flight is two tons, how in the world is anyone going to be able to go overseas? Moving on. Okay, now it suggests that my shorter and domestic flights can be replaced by land transport. It asks if my destination can instead be reached by train, bus, car, or ferry instead. Okay, let's keep agreeing with them so I can see how much all of these actions will reduce my footprint. I'm down from 9.3 to 6.7 so far. Not quite enough. According to the UN, it looks like I will have to keep on sacrificing. Okay, now it wants me to give up my personal transport. It says instead of owning my car, I can join a car sharing program instead. And that using public transport and joining a car sharing program will mean that I will only use a car when I really need to. So, now I'm down to 5.8 tonnes. I don't own a car anymore. I don't fly anywhere. I installed insulation in my home. I changed electricity suppliers, but that's still not enough. I will need to eat more plant-based food and consider being a vegan. I will need to shop less. It says, do you really need to own that next thing that you want to buy? Could you maybe rent or borrow it instead? So, with all of these sacrifices, giving up car ownership, flying, buying less, going plant-based and everything else that they've suggested, guess what? I'm still nowhere near the range of 2 to 2.5 tonnes. I'm now at 4.5 tonnes. What more are we going to be expected to give up to get anywhere close to this? And even though they currently say that I can pay $9 a month to offset my remaining footprint, that I can donate money to an approved SDG Goal 13 organisation, this won't be an option once the limits are enforced and no longer voluntary. Plus, the concept is absolutely ridiculous because if I can just pay $9 a month to cover going over my 2.5 tonne limit by two tonnes, if that is so effective, then why couldn't I just pay $30 a month and be able to maintain my current activities and habits? So how on earth is anybody going to fall within this permitted range of 2 to 2.5 tonnes, let alone under 2 tonnes, which has also been quoted on many agenda documents? So if we dig a little bit deeper, we find that further solutions, such as moving into human settlements that they call smart cities, which stands for sustainability, mobility, affordability, resilience, and technology is their ultimate solution to solving the alleged climate crisis. These smart cities will apparently further reduce our footprint to the required range of 2 to 2.5 tonnes per person per year because everything we require to meet our basic needs will be within just a few minutes and that interacting with family and friends who live far from us can instead be done online in the metaverse and that living in these human settlements will ensure that we never exceed our carbon footprint limit. I wonder if the everyday person realised all of this up front, if they would agree to such a future.